Are you ready to rumble? Today's video is made possible by Hulu Plus. For a free extended two week trial period, head over to huluplus.com forward slash TOT. Battle fans, welcome to the arena. Now who's fighting today? Well, I've got two cards in my hands. One from the Nvidia camp, which is red, and one from the AMD camp, which is black. What are these cards? Well, this is the MSI Twin Frozer Gaming Edition in this hand. This is the GTX 780 Ti, the cream of the crop card pretty much from people over at NVIDIA for the gaming enthusiasts. Now, some of the cool things about it are its Twin Frozer technology featuring these two fans, and the card actually does change clock speeds, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Now, in this hand, I've got the WinForce R9290X, the bad boy of the AMD cam. This is the WinForce Overclocked Edition, and this one actually has a switch for silent or turbo mode. Now as far as the power goes, both the cards require a single 6-pin and a single 8-pin power connector. The really difference between the cards as far as size go is, well obviously the AMD card is a little bit longer. So with that said, let's jump in to the battle. So the battle begins and it starts with Pricing. Now, the NVIDIA version of the card right now is costing $760. So you can get the Twin Frozer Gaming Edition, you can get that bad boy for $760. Now, the WinForce Overclocked Edition of the R9-290X is an amazing $825. That's right, $825. Why is this? Well, all the Bitcoin technology and all that stuff's coming out has inflated the price of these cards just outrageously. This card should come into market about $600. So there's quite a bit of difference right there between the two cards. Now, obviously, this may change the people who are viewing this video down the road. So make sure you always check the link down in the description. We have all the current pricing and listing to both cards. Next up, let's talk specs. First up, we have the MSI GTX 780 Ti Twin Frozer. Now this card can be clocked in three different modes via their software. We have the silent mode, which is 876 megahertz, the gaming mode, which is 980 megahertz, and then we have the overclock mode, which goes all the way up to 1085 megahertz. This card also has three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory clocked at 7,000 megahertz, and it's a 384-bit memory interface. Now on the AMD side of the fence, we see the gigabyte R9 290 the X Win4 specs as this. 1040 megahertz on the core clocked, which is overclocked. It also has four gigabytes of GDR5 memory running at 5000 megahertz. But unlike the Nvidia card, the R9290X has a 512 bit memory interface. Now for our testing purposes, we did things a little bit different because obviously these cards are supposed to be the badasses of the badass. So, you know, why take a sports car and drive it around a parking lot, right? So what we did is we tested everything in ultra 4K glory. That's right, no 1080p, no 1440p, no 1600p. We're talking total 4K, baby. First up, we see Crisis 3, which was on its high settings of 3840 by 2160. Now the MSI GTX 780 Ti had a score of 33.3 .3 average frames per second. The Gigabyte R9-290X, on the other hand, had 31.22 average frames per second, giving the lead to the MSI card. Just a slight lead, but still a lead. One quick note about our testing is in case you guys were wondering, both these cards were ran at their overclocked mode. So that means both of them were set at the very highest settings for when they're doing the testing at the highest resolutions. Next up. Battlefield 4 on its ultra settings. On the MSI GTX 780 Ti, we see 31.76 average frames per second. On the Gigabyte R9290X, we see 28.37 average frames per second, once again giving a slight lead to the Nvidia card. Now this next fact is gonna be something that's actually gonna blow a lot of your guys' minds. When we used Mantle on the AMD card, we got 15 frames per second. So obviously it does not seem like Mano is up to the old 4K. Next up, we see Witcher 2 at its ultra settings. The MSI GTX 780 Ti had 17.91 average frames per second. The Gigabyte R9 290X, however, had 16.88 average frames per second. Next up, Bioshock Infinite on its Ultra DX11 settings. The MSI GTX 780 Ti comes out with 49.64 average frames per second. The Gigabyte R9 280X had 44.79 average frames per second. Next, Tomb Raider with its ultra settings. See Laura Croft in her underwear at 3840 by 2160. Oh yeah. 
MSI GTX 780 Ti scores 33 average frames per second. R9 290X by Gigabyte, 29 average frames per second. I think we're starting to see a trend here, folks. Next up, Unigen Heaven. It's extreme settings. That's right. Now, the NVIDIA card got a score of 444. The AMD card, 379. Let's keep going. Stalker. Sunchaff scary at its ultra settings. MSI GTX 780 Ti at 70.8 average frames per second. The Gigabyte R9 290X at 64.7 average frames per second. Next up, Metro Last Light on its high settings. MSI GTX 780 Ti at 32 average frames per second. The Gigabyte R9 290X at 28 average frames per second. Next up, let's talk about temperatures of the cards because this is something that's a very, very important factor. I mean, let's just face it. Unless you're an Eskimo who's living up in the Arctic, you really don't need a card to keep you warm. You want your card to be really, really cool. Now, something I say right off the bat is aftermarket cooling is really paying off a lot more for the R9 290X, way more than the 780Ti. The 780Ti card ran a reference pretty damn good. Now with these two cards, we see the Nvidia card running at 74 and the AMD card running at 73. So hey, here we see AMD taking the lead and you guys all know that the R9 290X was one hot mother. So in this category, it's a really totally thumbs up for the wind force cooling. Now let's talk about something that really doesn't get discussed too often, the loudness or the decibel level of the cards. Now the Gigabyte card does however have three fans and it's running in supreme overclock mode. You could run it in silent mode but it would change the entire parameter of the situation. The MSI card however is running at 52 decibels. Not too bad. The AMD card's running at 62 and a half, so it's a little bit louder on the AMD side of things. But remember, the R9 290X was a very, very hard card to cool. We even thought it would need a water cooler. But the Windforce is doing a pretty damn good job on this card of keeping it both quiet and cool. So all right, folks, there you have it. I really hope that you guys enjoy this content and the way that we're bringing it forth to you. But one thing I have to mention is this video would not even be able to be brought possible to you folks without the help of Hulu Plus. So I just want to send a shout out right now to Hulu Plus and thank them for making this video possible for you. So I know many of you PC users out there know what Hulu is, but do you guys really know what Hulu Plus is? Because Hulu Plus is like a whole different level. Hulu Plus is like taking that standard video card, slapping a water cooler on it and getting the absolute most bang for your buck. Just all kinds of content. Now, with the standard Hulu, you can only watch it on your PC. But with Hulu Plus, baby, you can take that on the go, on your tablet, on your phone. With Hulu Plus, you can catch up on current shows, binge on old favorites, or watch a great movie. Stream as many TV shows and movies as you want, anytime, anywhere. You can also check out exclusive content including Hulu originals like The Wrong Mans and Behind the Mask. Best of all, you can watch all of this content in HD. Now I know a lot of people always ask, how can you guys support the site? Well at this time, you can support the site and get your guys a free extended trial period just by going to HuluPlus.com forward slash T-O-T where you can enjoy Hulu Plus for two weeks. So let's wrap this up, folks. You guys can see in most instances in 4K, the NVIDIA card is coming slightly ahead of the AMD card. Now, one thing that's gonna seriously change the dynamic, though, totally, is the price. 760 versus 825. I know it's not really that much of a price, but to some people, that might be all the difference in the world. Now, I have to say this. If the R9 card was at the $600 price level that it was supposed to be, it would be the serious ass kicker across the board. Now, in a perfect world, yeah, things would roll that way, but we're seeing the price in these things really, really expensive right now. And in a perfect world, you're actually gonna probably need two of these cards running in SLI or Crossfire mode to push that 4K properly. Our test with the single card showed it being pretty good, you know, those frames per second, 33 is not, you know, too eye stretching, but you're gonna want something that's gonna pump a lot more pixels across the board. 
Also, the AMD card is a little bit louder. Like I said before, that one's coming in at a little bit higher at 61 and a half versus 52. So there is a little bit of a sound difference there. And the AMD card was, as I said, slightly cooler though than the Nvidia card. So you guys make the decision at the end. I wanna see your guys' comments down below. Let me hear what you guys gotta say. And also, if you guys wanna see all this stuff in 1080p, 1440, leave a comment down below, like the video, and tell us, hey, we wanna see those scores. We'll make sure that we bring them to you. So I'm Elric, thanks for watching Tech of Tomorrow. We'll see you here for more videos soon, here on Tech of Tomorrow.